Hello, hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. James here, as ever, for today's ACCA Audit and Assurance, that's the F8 exam video, where I'm gonna walk and talk you through how to analyze questions coming from the September and December 2021 past paper. Now, this is the first time you've ever clicked on one of my videos. Hello there, my name is James, and on my channel, I help our ACCA students around the world pass their examinations for free. So if that's of interest to you, make sure you subscribe below, leave me any comments, because all my videos are dedicated to my lovely subscribers. And Kate has left me a lovely comment requesting this video above. Thank you very much, Kate. So be sure to give it a massive thumbs up. And if you want access to my full notes on this video, and also you can access it directly on ACCA's website, I've put all the links in the description below. Feel free to check it out and leave me any comments below how you get on in your examination and any other requests that you have. Because as I said on the channel, we go through tough exam paper questions like this, where we have peach code that you can see on the screen here. And I'm just going to take you through what was tested and how you should be analysing these questions if it came up in your examination. But would I just leave it blank like this? Of course not. Well, you can see on the screen, this is scenario one for Peachco, classic exam style question for audit and assurance about the planning of the audit. But notice, as you can see from my notes on here, it was a 16 mark question. That meant for me, I've got to talk about a minimum of eight areas that I've got to identify for the first mark. And this is where the 16 marks are broken down into eight points for two marks each. You're only going to have just over 28 minutes to complete this area, but notice how I've got that little one and the little two, because that breaks down the two marks for the eight points, which gives us our 16 marks in total. First mark is describing that audit risk, and the second mark is explaining the auditor's response to that risk. Eight marks in total, and you'd follow it through using the CBE platform. The next area that was tested, again, another classic area about the prevention and detection of fraud and error, where we've got to, again, apply it back to the scenario. It was only four marks here, just over seven minutes, but you should be picking up on that it's all about fraud and error, but at which stage? So are we at the prevention point or are we at the detection point? You must use the keywords and identify these in the actual requirements and then apply these back to the scenario. It's definitely going to help improve your answers. Then that took us through the first scenario on there. These are the extra notes which you can have a look through. But coming on to the next requirement now, and this was all about substantive procedures that you can see and obtaining appropriate audit evidence. And the first one was actually about describing and discussing your audit knowledge, where describe the limitations of internal control. So Basically, what can you remember from the core text of audit assurance? And if you need any help with which books to actually have a look at for your studies, again, check the description of this video. My recommendations are down there for all the up-to-date texts. But the key things to pick up on in your examination are that, note, you do not need to refer to the scenario in this requirement. So in other words, for four marks, just over seven minutes, testing your basic audit and assurance knowledge and applying the limitations of internal control. It was four marks, so in my eyes that's two limitations, describing them and discussing them well, going into relatively good detail on there. That is what the external is, uh, marker is going to be looking for. So that was four marks for part A, and then it got on to, for Pomerari and Co, uh, the actual question, where now it was another 16 marker, so you've got to be careful of this case as you go through it. But again, apply the same principle. First of all, work out the 28.8 um, minutes is what we are allocated for this. So 16 marks, 1.8 minutes per mark. The 20 mark questions overall for section B, you should not be spending more than 36 minutes on it. Yes, you can maybe take some time from section A and knock it up to maybe 40, but you've got to be answering the full 100 marks to give yourself the best possible chance of passing. But notice again in my actual uh, question analysis, we've got to identify and explain. Notice how eight is in capitals on there. So that should be a massive trigger for you in the exam that I've got to pick out eight deficiencies, two marks each, and that's going to get me my 16 marks overall. But it's the key thing here. You have to relate it to the internal control system and then provide that recommendation. So you can see from the actual table that you'd be given on the CBE platform, 
to actually address these deficiencies, notice what I've put in the box on there. Identify and explain in the first box for the control deficiency and then recommend and address those deficiencies in the right hand side. And that is the way to getting full marks on that part of the actual requirement. Then coming down to past all those notes on there is the third question, which was Danubco. So this is scenario three. And again, if you want to check out these questions, have a go at it yourself. The it's in the description, all the links to access them. But again, classic question on here, substantive procedures, obtaining sufficient appropriate order evidence. Another good phrase that you're going to have to get into uh, your examination answers. But again, start easy, six marks, 1.8 minutes per mark. So just over 10 minutes to complete this. All points when you see a question on the audit and assurance exam about substantive procedures, they will link it to a particular area. And in this case, it was land and buildings. So your answers when you're going through the substantive procedures amount obtaining sufficient appropriate audit evidence is everything. And you've got some little trigger terms on the side there. I like to encourage my students to use as to what can we recalculate, what samples are there, any documents that they refer to within the actual uh, scenario on there, but also breaking down the two different elements of land and buildings. So for six marks, you've got to write down six well-described substantive procedure points linking to either land or buildings. So it's most likely you're gonna have three points for land and three points for building on there. But just think about the, the easy marks for these style of questions as well, such as verifying the land and buildings actually exist, or thinking about the asset register and any adjustments. Should we be recalculating on there? But that was the first part on there for A. And then moving on swiftly down here for describing the procedures uh, the auditor should perform in relation to uh, exceptions noted during the trade receivables circularization in respect to Nalco and Congaco. Again, only four marks. It's a bit more of a shorter and sweeter question, just over seven minutes. But you must include trade receivables in both of your answers specifically referring to Nialco and Congaco. So a key thing here when you're going through the scenario analysis in your exam, identify where you see those names in the actual scenario and that is where you've got a pinpoint that you can see from my notes on here, two marks on the box for Nialco and two marks on the box for the audit procedures of Congaco. Use the figures given in the scenario and be specific in your answer two marks each, I would say you're going to have to be writing a minimum of four to five sentences for Nalco, four to five sentences for Congaco to give you the chance of getting the four out of four. The next area that was tested that we can discuss on the question analysis, how to get better at this, is notice everything underlined, as if you've watched one of my videos before, is important for you to pick up on. And notice how we've got the capitals, letters of provision and receivable on there. But again, if it was me in the exam, five marks, that is going to be only nine minutes where we've got to describe substantive procedures again. So going through those processes, I see five marks, and then I've got to have five well-explained substantive procedures the auditor should perform in order to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence in relation to the provision and receivable arising from the sale of defective goods. So you've got to be really specific, refer to the sale of those defective goods in your answer, link it into and maybe use a heading of provision or receivable to guide your answer on there. But again, stick to the basics. What can we verify, recalculate, apply back to the scenario? And that's where use those keywords that you can see in the requirement is definitely going to help shape your answer to getting full marks on that. With finally, in the last part of this question on here, we were given a bit more extra information, but it was all about key audit matters. And these are the sort of style of questions that you can get on your examination that are just simply audit knowledge. That yes, you might get a mark or two, and again, out of the five marks, nine minutes, one out of the five may be related to Danubco on here. But as you can see from my analysis, it was all about the audit engagement partners determined the issue, provision and receivable arising on that sale of defect, and then the key audit matters. So you're, you've got to describe the factors the audit engagement partner would have considered determining that key audit matter. 
So think about it, you are the partner, you are a senior figure, but it's demonstrating that key audit matter knowledge, which in this question, there was an element about being a listed company, which again, is a reason why we have to include it as a key audit matter. But just thinking it through logically, applying back to the scenario, but it's one of those questions where for the part two, we had to describe the content of a key audit matter section of the auditor's report for Danubco. So again, referring back to what did we have in the scenario, applying your knowledge on there, and that'll definitely help you out to getting a minimum of three out of five to pass this element of the requirement. Again, it was a 20 mark question overall. This one was more split out into five, six, four mark questions, but nevertheless, 36 minutes at 1.8 minutes per mark with a maximum of 40 otherwise you're not going to have time to attempt the full 100 marks in your audit and assurance examination that can be the difference that lots of students the external examiner says it in their reports students only attempt 80 marks 85 marks and by applying these question analysis points we've gone through in this video it's going to be really helpful to answer the full 20 out of 20 in this case here for Danubco. Well, Kate, I hope that has helped you out how to analyze a section B for audit assurance. As I said, make sure you check out the links in the description of this video so you can have an attempt at it yourself. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video on there. So be sure to give it a massive like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos to help you pass your examination. Leave me a comment how you get on in your exam and any other requests that you have because as we know these little points and picking up on the key terms can be the difference in you getting that 50 plus passing the audit and assurance exam it's only got a 40 percent pass rate as well so for every 10 students that turn up four will only pass it and i hope this video is going to be the difference that you've watched it now taking down some notes you're going to go away do some cve practice questions to time and you'll be coming back to the channel saying james I got the 50 plus because I watched your video on there. But as always on that bombshell, I'll see you next time. Cheers.